Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott, and we got some VRs due in the middle of the month, and I really don't have any art to share at the moment, so I decided to pop on real quick, show my face, and uh, support my homies, as it were, so let's do it. My best bud, John, over at 3D80's Kit, he wants to know what we're obsessive or neurotic about when it comes to collecting, and I don't know if that really applies to me, because I'm not really obsessive about anything. I guess we could search for some evidence though. Um, some people only collect one kind of slab, but as you can see, I'm not picky. I've got CSG, TAG, Beckett, SGC, and PSA. And then there's some people that will only collect high grade stuff like this 1953 Bowman Mike Garcia and an eight. And uh, some people hate slabs and tend to only collect beat up raw cards like this exhibit satchel page. But you know, I'm happy with both ends of the spectrum and literally everything in between. Um, and then there's some people that only collect pre-war or golden age, 60s, 70s, junk wax or modern. It's, it's all good to me, man. Maybe I'm a little neurotic about organization. I've got all my commons alphabetized and entered into trading card database, as well as my stars and current roster players and my team sets organized into spreadsheets and binders and stuff. And I do mark a lot of cards with what I paid for them or who gave them to me, but I don't see that as being obsessive really, maybe just organized. So I guess I may not qualify for this VR, but that's okay. You know, I don't think John was giving away any Cleveland cards anyway. My other bestie, Peter B, he is celebrating 150 videos and 150 subs, and he wants to see cards from our birth year. But Peter did something really cool when he presented this. He showed an entire lineup from his Red Sox on his actual birthday. So I'm going to try to follow suit. The Indians beat the Orioles 3-2 on my birthday in 1977, and not everyone had a 77 card, so I'll have to replace a few. Uh, leading off and playing short, going 1-3, for three, Alfredo Griffin. He doesn't even have an Indians card, so here he is 10 years later with the A's. Batting second, playing first, and going one for three, Andre Thunder Thornton on his first Indians card. Batting third, and going two for four, DH Rico Cardi. I'm striking out on the 1977 cards. Uh, batting fourth, second baseman Dwayne Kuyper. There's a 77. Batting fifth, and playing right field, Bruce Boakty. Behind the dish, and batting sixth, Fred Kendall, being played by Steve Carell with the mustache. I love Lamp. I'm failing again on the 77s, though. Uh, batting 7th and playing right, Paul Dade. Playing 3rd and batting 8th, going 2 for 4, Larvel Blanks. And then batting ninth and playing center field, Rick Manning. And the pitchers going 8 strong innings, giving up 4 hits. We've got Rick Waits. And then closing it out and striking out the side, Jim Bibby. We did get some 77s in there to finish it off. Not a lot of star power there, but fun to be able to piece that together. Thanks, Peter. My best friend Hugo over at Signs of the Past Time, he simply wants to know our favorite pickups for the year, and I was going to do that anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do a top 10 list because we're all doing these top however many lists right now. Now, I have my Holy Grail T206 Cy Young that I revealed this year, but I've had that for more than a year, so I'm not going to count that, and I'm also not going to count any gifts I've received. I've received so many mind-blowing gifts, but I don't want to get into a thing where I declare that, you know, I like Bobby's gift more than Susie's. That just wouldn't be cool. Uh, but enough yapping. Let's get on with it. We'll start with number four, 1948 signed Bill Veck letter responding to a fan. Uh, I wanted to find a cool Vec autograph, and this is a letter to a fan defending Lou Boudreau, written about a month before the Indians won the World Series. Awesome, awesome piece. At number seven, I've got my 1921 E121, Stan Kovaleski. This was from the Pittsburgh Mainline show. I just read Kovey's biography, so that might have bumped it up in my rankings a little bit, but kind of tough Hall of Famer to find a playing days card of. Number three, T206, Nap Lajoie. Gorgeous card I picked up at the National, and this means I only have one more card to go to finish up my T206 Nap team set. Numero uno, 1949 Bowman Larry Doby rookie. One of my three possible targets at the National this year. The T206 Nap was one of the others, um, and I certainly didn't expect to come home with two of them. But I bought this card within the first hour with an assist from Chris from Missouri, who inspired me to want this card in the first place. Number five, 1933 Tattoo Orbit Earl Averill. I've been after this card for years, and I never thought I'd find one so nice. Number two, Picture Pack Satchel Pages. I picked these up at the Strongsville show. Super, super cool. Number eight, 1951 Wheaties Bob Feller. This wasn't something on my radar, but I saw it at the Mainline Show in Pittsburgh, and I had to have it. 
Number nine, another Bob Feller, 1952 Red Man. This was my last purchase at the National from my buddy B. Roth. Coming in at number 10, 1949 Exhibit Satchel Page. I put in a low bid on this one, but I think that crease scared some people off, and I'm just happy to own it. And finally, number six, my 1958 signed Cleveland Indians Team Ball. This one features Larry Doby, Minnie Minoso, uh, Rocky Colavito, Mudcat Grant, and of course, where is he? There he is, Don Mossy. My BFF, Sammy Thunder, and Orlando from A Collector's Dream, they're both celebrating 2,000 subs, and they're doing a giveaway together. And they simply want to hear about hobby friends, which I could make a six-hour video about because I've got so many besties, but I don't think you want to sit through that, or at least I don't think you do. Um, but uh, the whole collaboration thing, it reminds me of when I was involved in a similar collaboration contest called Scott, Eddie, Tony, and Four Leafs uh, Brouhaha Giveaway Spectacular Extravaganza or whatever we called it. And I talk to those guys a lot, so I'm going to shout them out. Eddie from Eddie's Cardboard Chaos and I have our little disagreement on what color tape is best, but other than that, he's a really swell guy, and I love his allegiance to his Seattle teams, his multiple projects, and his thirst for history. He does these really neat mosaic art pieces, so you know I dig that, and uh, I only wish Eddie were closer so we could hang out more. There's Tony from TB's TTM Autographs, who literally texted me as I typed his name when I was writing the script. Tony's hilariously sarcastic. He's loyal to his fighting Irish and his cubbies. He's really good at design, and he's always looking out for me. He's always sending me eBay card listings for Cleveland cards. Even though I usually have them, I appreciate that he's thinking of me. And then there's Four Leaf. He's like a brother from another mother, but he's nothing like my dad, so that doesn't really make sense. But we've spent a lot of time together, and he's my annual national roommate. Dude is the yin to my yang. He is loud and obnoxious and boisterous and unorganized and easily excited and a great friend. He's a big old teddy bear with a heart of gold. And uh, what's funny is all three of these guys have artistic talents, and I didn't even put that together until now. Neat! So that's it for now. I've got a ton of Christmas cards to thank people for, and I'll get to that real soon. But for now, thanks to 3D80s Kid, Peter B, Signs of the Pastime, Sammy Thunder, and A Collector's Dream for the fun VRs. Thanks to Eddie's Cardboard Chaos, TB's TTM Autographs, and Four Leaf Cards for being such great friends. Uh, go check out any of those guys if you're not familiar. And I guess you can go find a better video to watch now. Happy holidays, everybody.